Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. So check it out. News feed as well. Let's go into the calendar for next week. Starting uh, tomorrow's October 10th. So we've got on our happy calendar, here's the 10th tomorrow. So a second full week of October, as I'd mentioned before, typically around towards the end of October, I'd say maybe about two thirds of the globe's mutual fund managers, um, the prospectus, I should say, well, it's outlined in the prospectus, but towards the end of the month is the um, fiscal year end for a lot of asset managers, not necessarily a calendar year end. So just keep that in mind. We typically see some heightened volatility in October. I've talked about this extensively on calls each week, um, and we certainly have seen that volatility. So just looking at um, holiday, uh, it's Columbus Day. If you guys didn't know, on Monday, banking system will be closed. Um, same thing with uh, Canada. It's a holiday. What are they observing? Canada makes an observance. Thanksgiving Day. Interesting. I never even knew that. Anyway, Thanksgiving's in October in Canada, I guess. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Um, so next Wednesday, we've got core CPI. And obviously, the markets... Um, in anything that's related, we're going to be keeping a closer eye on, um, you know, a lot of the doomsdayers have been out with a lot of those naysayer reports and basically said that inflation's becoming a real problem. <clears throat> if you follow me on Twitter at all, you can see I typically will retweet um, occasionally decent posts that I feel um, are important to know and what's going on in the inflationary setting. But we're seeing it in everything in this country. We're seeing it from supply chain disruptions. Um, we're certainly seeing it in energy prices and, and some other areas. So I think this will be a little more important than um, in previous years, in previous months for that matter. FOMC minutes come out as well. Everybody's looking for that taper discussion, right? Any hints, whiffs, sniffs inside Fed meeting minutes? Um, and so forth. Employment rate change is the pretty big, obviously, for anything trading AUD and then dollar based sales. I don't really care as much about this, obviously. But, you know, unless this totally falls off a cliff, right, because of inflation, uh, because of factors of parts of the economy having an issue restarting, right? <laughs> Although you never know running around the mall here in San Diego, it's crazy. Anyway, what else do I want to say? That's pretty much it. Futures charts and the uh, equity markets, uh, energy. So we've been seeing a rise in all energy, gasoline, heating oil, nat gas, all that stuff. Gold's been going down because the dollar's been going up. And equity markets have had their first pretty good um, correction off of high levels. As you can see, these are all daily charts. So tech suffered a little bit more charts look a little more damaged than broad market and equities globally because of the fact um, that tech has really moved up a bunch um, hell since you know obviously the pandemic bottom in march of 2020 but hell last 12 years right since the big financial uh, crisis so <clears throat> mid caps and small caps have uh it has chart actually looks better than some of the big cap stuff um this this was just a whole fluke if you trade anything related to Japanese equities. I mean, this thing just has gotten clobbered um, from what was arguing a, a pretty solid move. It just determined to be a complete head fake. Uh, same thing with DAX. Looks a little worse in terms of structure. So if you're trading any of these US 30s, NASDAQ, S&P, uh, just be aware that until further notice, we're in trend down, obviously. Been talking about this for weeks. Um, it's much easier to sell the rips than buy the dips so just remember that uh well metals no surprise going down 
I've noticed there's been a pretty big break in the last week of the prognosticators, as I call them. Those are usually just the talking heads that come on CNBC or Bloomberg or Fox Business and talk about what's going on globally. There's been a pretty good break of them in terms of what their thoughts are. In the price of gold, <clears throat> let's see what else do I want to say? Note to the pretty decent movements in most of the U.S. Treasury market last week. Um, they're really seeing new lows across the board. <clears throat> so, I mean, this is pushing yields up, no surprise. Um, the, the thing that typically is a surprise about this particular line of different bond quotes, again, daily charts, each candle represents a single day, um, is that you have prices falling across the board. You know, it <clears throat> certainly of note is the 30-year and the 10-year. Um, at this, the, the prices falling is a complete seesaw of yields, right? So if price goes down, yields go up. That means people that own this paper, uh, certainly from the current levels, are seeing a higher yield as price comes down. The problem a lot of investors don't pay attention to is when they buy into bond funds, well, we're just not fans of it first down for our clients, is that now the price of the mutual funds going down as well. So a lot of people think, well, you know, I'm getting more yield. Well, you are relative to price, but the price is actually falling. <clears throat> so, you know, I, <clears throat> I, this is probably my weakest area in terms of analysis of the credit markets. You know, I look at it for what it is. I can see the candles for what they are. Um, this is typically an inverse related um, trade relative to equities, right? You'd expect to see the price of these going up, um, but instead they're falling. So a lot of that has to do with inflation. There's obviously some over levering, if you will, in the notes and bonds area as far as global funds. Um, so I think there's some deleveraging going on there. Um, it's just my opinion. Haven't done a ton of research in it. It's just an off the cuff analysis of what's going on. You can see that I had talked about an upper flag forming last week, and that's kind of what we're seeing play out in the dollar. So obviously we have a reverse of that in almost every other major, with the exception of this Canadian dollar. So this chart sort of breaking um, in from the others. You know, we've seen obviously big weakness in the yen, not as much in uh, the pound, but certainly in the euro. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the charts. I think that's everything I want to see. Even though this isn't as related to currencies, you know, my hope with everybody, including clients of our firm, is that you know we don't necessarily want them to have all these charts memorized, and you know it's not that important, but just to understand the you know the cause and effect relationships between movements in different asset classes. On to the charts. So S and P, I could get too much into this. Um, I want to see things play out before I'm going to start, but it just this looks like another dead cat bounce to me. We're probably going to go back down, and test the lows. This whole 44, um, like 44, um, right around the 0304 level, really has been a wall. Every time we've come up to this point and tried to poke our heads above it, it's been met with resistance. So right now. Um, there are some pretty big players out there that are defending this level. So for now, I still think we're going to go back down and test. This is a little bit easier type of analysis if you're trading this in any form, future uh, equity ETF or um, on the MT4 platform to do the analysis on a four-hour chart. You can even drop down to one hour, but you can see this level I've talked about here <clears throat> right down at this whole 4,400 area has been uh, tough area. If you look at the futures markets, this is the continuous contract for the S&P. Um, here, let me just reset this. <clears throat> it's a little bit easier to see. Typically, between the futures contract and the actual S&P, or the SPX, I should say, um, there's a pricing difference, and this is because this is what's called a front month contract. Uh, this is much easier to see in terms of trading futures. Personally, everybody that has asked me about um, trading anything on the MT4 related to a US 30 or something in one of these other indexes, I usually will recommend that they follow the futures markets, not the broad market itself, right? 
<clears throat> because a lot can be seen looking at the YMs, or in this case, the ES, the mini contract. This is a super liquid, is the most liquid of all futures contracts out there. And it can give you tremendous insights into what's going on. But pricing, as you can see, with the front month contract is slightly different than the S&P. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> Someone call it a contango, right? All right, on to currency. <clears throat> All right, DXY is the upper flag I've been talking about. Um, clues as far as what, what's going to happen from this, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me at this point, this whole 93.50 area now is our floor. I could be wrong, uh, but it does seem like it wants to pop higher and test ultimately what I think is a big pocket of long-term stops about 50 cents higher than it's currently valued, just under 95. That's just my feeling. Again, I could be wrong. So you're going to see the opposite of this, um, at least as far as the euro is concerned. We've got, you know, the edge of the cliff right here, this whole 1550-ish area. And then we've got a pretty solid air pocket where we really didn't trade much. Um, and in most of the movements we've seen where you've had very thin trading or what's called missing notches, if you're a market profile person, um, we'll begin to trade into this, but it could be a very quick move um, down to this 1450 area. We've talked a lot about how air pockets or what they call low volume nodes um, can really play out. Um, so I just, if we break this area, obviously breaking higher in the dollar, I'm just not, I would not be accepting any trades stepping in front of that freight train, right? So until further notice, in this particular case, I'd only be selling the rips, not buying the dips. I don't care what the software brought me. It's a big long-term level. When we break it, we're probably going to rip and zipper through it. Looking on to the pound, again, daily chart. This one's a little more murky, but we're essentially still in this upper balance zone that we've been in since... February, you could even argue as we drop down here further, you can even extend this upper area all the way back when we first uh, touched into it, uh, which was towards the end of last year. So coming up on a year, we've been in this upper area. You know, obviously, I think it's going to take any movements of the dollar to break out of that. Cad, this one's interesting. So. Let's take a look at a weekly first. We spent to one, two, three, four, five days. Five days below this long-term support line of 2280-ish. Harry can argue this, this whole zone uh, all the way from the 2020 area, yeah. basically the century mark here, uh, all the way up to this area. Now we're sort of back in the zone. I still think it's going to take movements, obviously, from the dollar to get us out of this area. USD JPY, I'm showing this because it looks like it wants to break higher. No surprise. This is a long, tight balance. This could absolutely blast off higher. So if you're trading this, I would keep a close look at this chart from a weekly perspective. Okay, If you're trading it from a daily, we already have blasted the higher. It's actually a great example of, <clears throat> of a lot of concepts that I teach students. Let me show you guys this right now. And maybe this will be sort of like old school technical analysis for you, so be it. Let's just consider maybe this to be a, almost a clinic example of this. So as we have this whole upper zone, which comes literally back to this whole area, ever since we were all the way back to Q1 of this year, we've traded in a really tight zone. We peaked above it, but we only had one day where we held above and came right back in. So the argument here was, you know, somebody is defending this maybe. Um, you know, we came right back inside the balance. So we came and broke out again, similar pattern. This time we spent two days outside the support area, 
came back down, tested it. See this doji right here? And now we're moving back up to what would appear to be over the last few days, initiating activity. Not sure if you guys ever heard this term before, but initiating activity essentially is that, hey, maybe XYZ group of institutions are not defending this level anymore. Maybe we're going to start to see some initiating activity, meaning other time frame players are coming into the marketplace and taking this higher. This is textbook that your team should recognize, especially from a daily perspective, right? <clears throat> and these patterns are stronger on higher time frames, typically, uh, historically, as far as stats of, you know, when this is um, now, support, now solid support area. It's almost perfectly on this red line. So the one, 111 almost even area is support. USD CHF still inside a longer term balance. I don't always have the best read for this one, but we're in a, a small, tight, coiling type of balance area here. Uh, longer term, again, kind of similar to the chart I just showed you. It's possible when you spend a lot of time in these areas to maybe there will be some initiating breakout activity if we get above this. It's possible want to see at least a couple of days of candles close above the area and maybe if some sort of doji show up on day three or four pulling back to this area in order for it to look like it's going to go higher canadian dollar perking up <clears throat> euro gbp long time in this zone over six months but the edge of the cliff is right down here, this whole 85 area. Euro JPY, just let you guys see this. I don't really comment much on these. <clears throat> Euro CAD, this one is certainly of note. It has broken down. Notice when we broke, we've been one time framing down. If you can see this for one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty solid initiate initiating activity by institutions so you want to drop to the weekly on the uh, say increase to the weekly and the ultimate edge of the cliff is this almost perfect 4400 area just the century mark right here the edge of the cliff wouldn't want to be long underneath it especially on a couple of days of daily close below this zone forty three hundred I call it a century mark because you know, every time you get closer to a big number, um, <clears throat> we just call it century. Like 5,000 on the S&P or if the dollar was to hit 100, just been to it before. Euro AUD, same tight range. Let's look at the daily. Lots of currencies near the bottom or the top for that matter. GBP CAD, here's the NEO currency. Talked a lot about how this broke in our daily chart, what broke underneath this area, which had been pretty solid support. <clears throat> Came back up against it. See these two candles? Completely, um, I was rejected from this level. Then you had a doji form, which more than likely tells you we cannot get over that level. More downsides coming. You'd want to be riding this train down, not trying to step in front of it. <clears throat> this is a big support area, too. Notice we just blew right through it like it was butter. Typically tells you if you have a failed auction and we're going to auction lower, you usually want to test out the big zones. I guess if I had done some sort of uh, decent analysis, which I'm not going to do right now as far as looking at the volume, because I don't know that I trust the volume on this currency, at least as far as what TradingView brings in. Um, we could look at a profile. I'd be willing to bet there's some sort of low volume or uh, value area low somewhere down here at this the 68, 70-ish area, which is the edge of the cliff. <clears throat> so my hope, as Fernando's probably getting sick of hearing, is that his team puts some of this or already has some of this, at least as far as a couple of factors it looks at. Um, but, I mean, it should have been riding this whole thing short uh, for a good chunk of the entire day, in my opinion. I don't know what the software did. I try not to spend any time in these rooms in Telegram because I'm trying to get everybody away from Telegram and do the chat elsewhere. 
Um, not, not sure that that's gaining the traction our executives hope for. Um, cause at any point, Telegram could blow us out of the company, right? They can remove all these chat rooms if they want. They've done it a lot. Um, in which case, everybody's just like, well, what do I do now, right? No, I'll just get on the AP Live platform and, you know, we can have uh, probably some chat rooms. I'm pretty sure they're going to build into there um, pretty soon. Seems like that would be the ultimate migration. All right, <clears throat> gold. This looks like this thing wants to go lower if obviously currency keep moving up, especially the dollar. Not going to talk too much on that. There's oil. Major highs over the last couple of years. You got to go to the weekly on this dog to see where we are. We're even above the weekly. On, so you got to go to the monthly. Seems like it's vying for this 100 area. I'm actually, it's not true. Seems like it looks like it wants to trade up to this 107. This thing gets over $100 a barrel. Um, there's going to be a ton of pressure, as if there isn't already, on our regulators and politicians and <clears throat> just our general group of idiots in Washington um, to get something done. But this is all supply-demand issues right here. <clears throat> Currencies. I will say I'm surprised by this Bitcoin move and all the shills out there that are now patting themselves on the back. Uh, but just here's a daily chart the whole grand scheme of things. We're now finally back up inside that head and shoulders <clears throat> area from way back in the spring. And we've zoomed right up into that area um, from what looked like some pretty deadly pullbacks that were at least going to take us back down to this area. That was my read, and it was wrong. Take that for what it is worth. All right, cool. A shorter session. <clears throat> do make sure you spread the word of these calls. It's the single best thing you can do for any investor that wants to be a long-term subscriber to AP. Tell them to get educated. Get them, you know, sort of hooked on the sauce, if you will. Um, and I promise everybody listening to this, you will be a better investor. So I wish everybody a great week. Be safe. May the trades be with you. Thank you.